These questions can be kind of difficult. Uh, we tend to see more of these in the hard module. Uh, they they often involve a little bit of extra work. All right, which choice most logically completes the text? And you can see in the text, we've got a lot of stuff, and then we got this blank here. Uh, just to summarize what these are basically asking us to do, we're still thinking about the main idea of the passage, but we're gonna kind of stop short. So they might not actually really get to the main idea. They'll, they'll hint at it, they'll kind of lead us somewhere, and it's our job to kind of understand where we're being led. And so the answer choices will very often give us new information that might not appear elsewhere in the passage, so that's okay. Uh, in other places, we've eliminated answers that provide new information because that was not our task. But here, that's kind of the name of the game, is, is we're just kind of finishing a thought. And so sometimes it might make sense to include slightly new things in there, but it's still gonna in some way relate back to whatever else came before. So um, my advice is just to kind of listen as broadly as possible as you read this in your head and then just try to kind of highlight words that, that seem, I don't know, connected uh, and try to maybe come up with your own guess for what might go in the blank. Let's see what we can do here. These are hard. These are hard questions. Uh, to create the poems in her 2017 collection, One Last Word, poet Nikki Grimes used a writing method called the Golden Shovel. This method often involves choosing a line from an existing poem and then using each word from that line as the last word of each line in a new poem. It's a hard sentence to follow, but okay, there's some method. That's what I'm getting. She uses the golden shovel method. Uh, Grimes wanted the poems in one last word to honor important black poets of the past, so she chose lines by poets such as Langston Hughes and Georgia Douglas Johnson. Okay, so she's honoring black poets. Writing in this way can be challenging and might seem as though it would produce awkward poems. However, reviewers praised One Last Word as a beautiful and powerful tribute to the poets who inspired it. So, might be bad, but it's actually good. This reaction suggests, so we're talking about this, okay. So this, this reaction suggests that, I don't know, I, I honestly don't even know what could go in this blank here. Um, this method is worthwhile is kind of my guess. Right? They seem to be going out of their way to talk about how the method is a challenging thing, is kind of unusual, but maybe it's good. Uh, the fact that it ends on that positive note is really what's sticking with me because it, it, it seems to um, want to continue that. Sometimes we see this with vocabulary questions where a word like this is deliberately used to kind of say, we're, we're continuing what we just said, we're continuing that previous thought, so we don't want to vary it too much. Let's see what we get here. Um, this is a hard one. Uh, a. So this reaction suggests that most reviewers didn't understand Grimes's goal for one last word. Well, that sounds bad. If most people don't understand your goal, that sounds bad. So notice, this is the benefit of a dumb summary and just thinking about like a positive here. We want something positive. A is a negative answer choice, so I'm not gonna think too deeply about it. It's probably wrong. Uh, B, Grimes successfully, hmm, positive, used the golden shovel method to achieve her goal for one last word. Well, that sounds a lot like what my summary was, right? That this method, this golden shovel method was worthwhile because it was a success. It was an achievement, right? She achieved her goal. So I, I don't have like a strong feeling, like I'm not like, oh, that's definitely it. But I'm certainly not eliminating this choice. Like it, it seems to be checking a lot of boxes that I thought about before, before I looked at the choices. So, uh, you know, we should keep this around. Let's look at C. Langston Hughes, or sorry, sorry, this reaction suggests that Langston Hughes and George Douglas Johnson are two of Grimes' favorite poets. Well, that's a big claim. Um, it's, it's definitely um, an extreme saying that they're her favorite. That's a strong word right there. Now it says that she referenced them. Why does it say that? She wants to honor them. Uh, it, we get those names, but there are such as. There might be other people. In fact, it's, it seems like there are other people. They just chose to mention these two. But just because they happen to mention Langston Hughes and Douglas Johnson, it doesn't mean that they're both like the most important people. They just happen to be the examples that they chose in this, this passage. So we would need something very specific to say that the whole point of this method was to honor these two people. We're not getting that. So this is going too far. That word favorite really needs to stand out to you. It's, uh, when I say strong word, it's a word that has a very strong meaning, conveys a lot of information, and so we need to make sure that information is backed up with something else in the passage. D, Grimes inspired many other writers to create poems using the golden shovel method. Well, that sounds positive, right? Inspired, you know, other people. Uh, but this is a good example where we are maybe writing our own version of the passage and not thinking about the version presented to us. We need to continue with what's already set. So maybe it did inspire other people, but notice other people 
are not mentioned here, at least not as um, people that she inspired, right? She's inspired by Langston Hughes and Georgia Douglas Johnson. But we're not getting like Nikki inspiring then the next generation of poets. So we got to be careful. This again is going too far. But even still here, B was a much safer fit with what we had already anticipated. So this is the benefit, if you can, of coming up with your own guess for that blank before you look at the choices. But it took some cleverness on my part. That was not easy for me to do. Sometimes you might not be able to do it at all. So, you know, my recommendation is if you keep the, the summary or the guess as simple as possible, positives and negatives really do help, then you're more likely to get something usable. But if you're wrong, then be flexible. Just, you know, kind of think about it. But no matter what, the answer shouldn't just be like a random fact. It should flow from what came before. You should be able to point to other lines and say, this is how we got there. That's the point of these questions is it's kind of like they wrote most of the passage and then they're leaving it to you to write the last line, write the conclusion. It's a little harder than other questions, but it's still kind of using the same skills. We're still looking at the answer choices a lot and really picking them apart. We're still thinking about dumb summaries and connotations. Um, we're really just trying to make sure that we are not overthinking it and getting bogged down in too many details details. If something is a main idea, it's probably important. And so we want to repeat it in the passage. And then in this case, in the answer choice as well.